Hello all my beautiful sisters from those other misters. Welcome back to my channel. It is time for the next installment of a testing all of my products series. Today I'm doing ugh, highlight palettes. Now I've done individual highlighters and I'll link it below. I'll link all of the series below if you've just come across this series and you enjoy this video and you want to watch more there are more videos in this series or if you want a refresher you can go back and watch uh, whatever you like. Now I decided to do this series because um, I have quite a large makeup collection and I feel like I don't know it, <laughs> like I don't know her. Um, so I wanted to go through and like methodically use all of the products that I own and decide what to keep and what to get rid of. When it came to highlighters, I had so many individual highlighters, it was like a problem. I just couldn't do highlighters and highlight palettes at the same time. So I split them up and you can see I don't have a whole lot of highlight palettes, which is great. I'm going <gasps> to... Oh gold, I was scared that was going to happen. I mean, it was inevitable, wasn't it? Okay, let's stop fluffing around and let's just get into it. Now, um, I've only got 13 highlight palettes here. I want to definitely get rid of some and I need to say I have to... I have to refer to my notes for the whole of this video because these palettes, I'm pretty sure they've been sitting in my um, filming room for over a month it's been it might even be two months like I don't know how long it's been since I actually finished testing these out since then I've moved on to other things um, and wearing a jumper today was a mistake it's it's so warm outside I want to go out and do a thing I'm going to start with my ABH palettes because they're the ones I have the most of um, and they might even, you know, be right up there with my faves. So, uh, this was hard for me. Um, let's start with the Dream palette. So, I have opted to keep this one mostly because I just can't bring myself to get rid of it. Is my mic on? Yep, good. Um, <laughs> this is a beautiful palette. I really haven't used it this that much. It is what you would consider a colourful palette, but it's kind of not over the top. You know, the shades are pretty, um, they're pretty soft and subtle. So we'll start with Wish on the top, which is like a neutral uh, yellowy gold pink combo. It's quite pretty. Um, it comes off more yellow on the skin with a pink sparkle. Then we have Unicorn. So this is an ultraviolet type shade. I personally feel like it is the most overdone color um, in like colorful highlight palettes, uh, which makes it the most boring for me. Um, so it's not something that I would reach for very often. It's also, I have olive undertones, so it's not really a color that works all that well for me. Um, there are certain instances where I would use it. I did enjoy wearing it. It didn't look bad. It's just, you know, not going to be my first choice. But um, yeah, I, I didn't mind it. Uh, the next one is Magic. This is a silvery pink with a violet sparkle. The, um, the violet is very subtle though, so it's quite easy for me to wear. I would say this is all, like it almost looks like a nice neutral highlight um, and doesn't really have that um, like color sort of look to it. I feel like in the pan it almost looks a bit green but it just it works beautifully on the skin. It's fine. Next up uh, we have Ethereal. So this is almost identical to Magic um, but you can probably see there's a little bit more of like a um, pinky purpley uh, tone to it and this one looks a lot more silver with those very very subtle hints of green. Sunshine is the next one. Uh, it's a yellow with a purple sparkle and Regal which is the orange. Um, it's 
got some hints of like pink in there. I'd say it's got like a pink sparkle, but it's a really beautiful orange shade and a little bit unique to my collection. Now I have opted to keep the Dream palette. I think I already mentioned that. Um, mostly because I felt like there were other palettes that I was willing to get rid of and I still wanted to keep some, oh, some colourful uh, highlights in my collection because sometimes I feel like it. Most of the time I don't but sometimes I do. Next up is Moonchild and I think this might have been the first highlight palette that I bought from ABH and look I really enjoyed it. I got some use out of it. This is quite um I don't know for me it feels quite dated now um let's just put it that way it is very old I've had it for a long time I am going to declutter this one but I'll take you through it and uh, we'll talk about why I just felt like this one was sort of good to go you might be able to tell straight off the bat that it's very like bluey purple um and uh, the, they just don't they don't flatter my skin at all. They look extremely frosty, quite um, jarring on my skin. They just clash with my skin tone. So um, I pretty much went through, you know, all of these like bluey purple shades and I'm like, they're all just so similar and they all do the same thing to my skin and I just, I'm not really here for it. Then we have this one, which is Pink Heart. It is just a like... It's kind of like a translucent base with a pink shift. It is pretty, but it's quite generic, um, and I just don't feel like I'm going to reach for it that much. Then we have Lucky Clover, which is a pretty green, but I'm just not, I don't see myself wearing it ever at all. This one, I didn't feel like there was really room for it in my collection. Um, I just don't see myself reaching for it. So it's an end of an era and I am going to let it go. I do, look, I love it for reasons, but the reasons are not related to actually using it as a makeup item. So it is, it's going. Aurora. Okay, so this was sort of like the, the sister palette to Moonchild, the one we just saw. And here is what she looks like. I did find this palette to be much more wearable, um, much more skin tone friendly for me. So we're going to jump around a little bit. Eclipse, Luna and Lyra. These were all beautiful and I loved them. They worked really nicely for me. Um, Eclipse is kind of like a peachy shade. Luna is sort of a silver with very very subtle hints of pink and purple um, and Lyra is another really just stunning peachy orange shade um, you can I don't know if you can really see the peach in this one um, it's more of like a translucent base with like the peach hints but it's just stunning 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 love it um, so those three shades I was like I am prepared to keep the palette simply for those. Then we had uh, Helia, which is this sort of, in the pan, it looks sort of like a greeny grey. I'm not sure if you can really see that, but, and it does have hints of green in it, but again, it's kind of like a slightly translucent base with like a I don't know, kind of like a cool yellow shift. It's quite pretty. I enjoyed wearing it. Then we have Spectra and Orion. Now, Orion, I probably wouldn't reach for. Spectra, oh, Spectra is pretty cool. It's sort of like a, oh, I don't, like a grayish lavender with hints of pink. Um, it's quite unique. It doesn't, it's kind of got a dark base. Can you kind of see it there? Um, so it, it doesn't really work for me all the, all the time. Like I had troubles with it when I was originally testing it out because, um, you know, winter skin. Um, but I did actually play around with it on my eyes and stuff as well. And I, I felt like, look, kind of making excuses to justify having you know more shades in the palette that I'll use I probably never reach for it 
to use it on my eyes but I liked it enough and I was intrigued enough by it to want to play around with it so Aurora I am holding on to Next, I have the Sun Dipped Glow Kit. Now, I believe I got this in a Beautylish Lucky bag. And look, this is an easy, easy pass for me for a few reasons. One, these pans are too big. Now, they are removable. I'm going to talk about two shades in here that I like and two shades that I don't. Some of you will be like, oh, just take the pans out. I don't like the texture on the skin. So let's get that out of the way <laughs> straight away. Um, bronzed and tourmaline are both just too dark for me. They just don't, they don't work. Um, tourmaline has that really beautiful reflect, but you'll be able to see when I, um, you know, angle the shades, you can see the color depth there. They are definitely better suited to darker skin tones than mine. Then we have Summer, which is the one up top, and Moonstone. Now, I did like these. I can wear these, but again, I just don't like the texture on the skin. For some reason, these looked um, quite thick. They enhanced texture a lot, um, and it's the sort of thing where, like, you know, we've all got skin texture, um, and I'm, you know, closer to 40 than I am to 30, much closer. Um, so, you know, when you smile, you get like fine lines around your eyes and they sort of start to creep up into like, you know, your cheekbones where you put your highlighter. And if the texture of a highlighter is not right for me these days, it's very obvious and I don't like the way it looked. So I've opted to get rid of this palette, even though like when I first started testing this out, I was like, I will probably pop out the two lighter shades and keep them because I just really love a like natural color highlight but the texture was a deal breaker for me so this one is being decluttered last ABH palette certainly not least possibly most likely my favorite this is a Nicole Guerrero palette um, I really like this palette. It is full of those beautiful soft neutral shades. Um, mine looks a little bit funny because we repressed it for an episode of the Makeup Breakup and it's still holding up strong. Um, and yeah, I, look, I still like this palette. Okay, we'll start with Kitty Cat. So this in the pan, this has like a, you know, pinky ever so slightly, maybe tiny, tiny hints of peach. But um, on the skin, when this girl is blended out, it appears more silvery than it does pink. But the pink hints in it, like, softens it ever so slightly so it doesn't just look like a silver stripe on my face, which I really enjoy. Uh, the next one is Forever Young. So this is slightly lighter and more neutral than Kitty Cat when it's blended out on the skin. And it, I mean, of the two, it is my favorite. Then we have Daydream. So this is like a kind of like a really interesting champagne-y orange color. There are like gold sort of duochrome hints. I hope you can kind of see that when the light hits it. Um, it's really beautiful, like the peachiness, the gold, it just, I love it. Forever Lit is a really cool one. It's quite bright. It's almost like a silvery white shade with hints of blue. Um, it's just, it's pretty. And I actually, I was like, no, nah, too light for me. Not going to be able to use this, but I found it was just fine. Then we have uh, Glow Getter. So this is just a peachy gold shade and 143 is a bronzy gold. It's really pretty. I did feel like it was too dark for me when I was using it a couple of months ago. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's not something I wouldn't be able to use in summer. So considering how many shades out of this palette that I just enjoyed and I could actually see myself wearing on a regular basis, this was an easy keep for me. Here I have the uh, Kat Von D and it, you know, okay, they've changed their name, but this was, you know, the Kat Von D brand when that was still a thing. Uh, it's the Alchemist Holographic Palette. 
Man, I loved this thing. This was a subscriber gift, and I can tell you right now, um, sentimental, very sentimental for me. I will not use it um, because I just, I mean, the colors are kind of, again, in that slightly generic, not really what I'm looking for kind of thing, or I have it in other palettes where I just prefer the texture. But I also don't really want to get rid of it because it has that sentimental value for me. I think I'm going to pop this in my sentimental drawer and I'm going to hold on to it. I will say this shade here, which is the blue, it's called Blue Sapphire, um, is absolutely stunning. It is a really like fresh, almost like clear blue sky color. I really enjoy it. So this one... I am holding on to, but it's not going to stay in my um, standard makeup collection. It's going to go into my sentimental drawer. Oh, hello. Do you need to say hello? What are you doing? No, don't steal. Do not steal anything. You need a cuddle. Oh, did you get looked at? Don't lick my face. I just did my makeup. Next up, I have the Nikia Joy Cosmetics Illuminate Luxury Highlighting Palette. So this is a six pan palette. Oh, I still got the slip in there. Um, and these guys are all quite, like they're quite similar to the Nicole Guerrero in the fact that they're like, you know, neutral, um, very wearable sort of skin tony colors so i'm actually going to start down the bottom with the with this particular palette uh we've got gilded which is this shade here and we've got golden which is this shade here now gilded is um it's like a rich champagne or like a deep champagne color it's really beautiful but it is too dark for me and obviously golden is obviously too dark for me i would say it's kind of like a bronzy peach there's some beautiful orange tones in there i do think it is a gorgeous um color both of them are maybe i mean i don't know you'll be able to see like the sort of cast on gilded which is this one right here it gets a little bit dark for me. Um, maybe I could use it in like summer on my body or something like that. Um, but I don't think I'll ever be quite dark enough on my face for that. So those two shades, not likely to get used. Or golden at least wouldn't. Um, gilded is a, a maybe. We'll jump back up to the top. Glisten um, is like a silvery shade with hints of champagne, which I really enjoy. It's not straight up silver. It's got those sort of, you know, skin-esque colors in there, which is really nice. Then we have Glimmer, which is a really pretty pale gold. Glow is a peachy gold and Gleam, which is this one here. It's like a soft pink. Now, I really enjoyed this palette, at least the the first four shades obviously these two down here too dark um and i am going to hold on to it but i think what i'll do if i'm not finding myself reaching for it this one will be on the chopping block in the future i really tried hard to you know let go of as many highlight palettes as i could and same with individual highlighters because i have too many like I have so, so many, but obviously, you know, a few years ago, there was a highlight boom. I was obsessed with them. I bought a lot of them. Um, I wore a lot of them. And then I went through a phase where I didn't want to wear highlighter. And now it is an integral part of my routine. And I absolutely love wearing highlighter. So I'm finding that this is a very difficult category for me to like, you know, let it go. Um, but I want to also be a kind of, at least a little bit kind of realistic. So, um, this is one that I am going to hold on to for now, just because so many of the colors are right for me. And if I'm feeling like, you know, the Nicole Guerrero and this guy or others that I have in my stash are just too similar, then I will make that decision down the road. Um, but for now... I'm not ready to get rid of it. I also really like the formula and these have beautiful light reflect. Let's talk about a palette that I, look, 
when I started this project and I was pulling them all out and I took them in my room and I was preparing to use them, I was like, this palette is definitely being decluttered. 110%. I'm not keeping this. And then I used it and now I can't. Uh, I'm keeping it. It is what it is. It is the Opera Glow Up palette. Okay, so Star Island. This is a really pale champagne shade. Um, it's not as interesting as the Nakia Joy one. I feel like the Nakia Joy one has, um, I don't know. There's something slightly different about it. Let's, let's swatch them side by side. Maybe it's just, maybe the Nakia Joy one is more neutral. Yeah, I feel like, or maybe there's even, it almost, the Nakia Joy one almost looks like it has hints of pink in it compared to the Star Island one. So yeah, they are very similar, but also they are different. Um, next up we have a uh, Rodeo Drive, which is this one, I think. Yeah, uh, it's just pale gold. Blissful is like a pale sort of rose gold shade. And then we've got Beverly Hills up the top, which it's super, super similar to Blissful, like I would say you don't need both. Um, I mean, if you see the difference there, you might say they're quite different. But um, I would say uh, Beverly Hills is almost like a darker, more bronzy version. And it, look, the problem with that shade is it's one of those like really like cringy split pan things. Um, so it can be really difficult to get like a consistent um, amount of product or consistent coloring because if you you know pick up too much of one shade and not enough of like the lighter shades it kind of you know makes it a little bit difficult to use um, but I did kind of enjoy like digging around into the different shades um, to play around with them I'm pretty sure like, it wouldn't surprise me if this shade up here is exactly this shade, and maybe... Um, no, I feel like, I feel like potentially, I really, like, this is too light reflective. This one up here and this one are probably the same shade, but I'm pretty sure the other shades in the palette are different. Anyway, I've opted to keep that one. Um, I really liked the way that it sat on the skin, I liked the formula. Um, I'm just going to play around with it and, you know, let's face it, already I have too many highlighters here just with these palettes. Like, I realistically, like, just one would be enough to last you probably a few years, but, um, I mean, this is the makeup world. Who does that? I don't know. Normal people. Sane people. Not me. Next up, I have the S Effect by Samira palette. So this is a quad palette and it is like, it's quite neutral. And I feel like now we're just sort of seeing repeats of shades that I've basically already shown you from other palettes. And look, on my list, I marked this as one where it was like, you know, hold on to it and just use it and play around and if you decide you don't want it in the future you can get rid of it but I think I'm actually going to declutter this because I'm feeling like I have I have too much I'm keeping too much um so oh here we go how do I oh, where are the names no it's fine it's fine they're on the palette so uh the top one is delicate pleasure it's a really nice like bright white highlight it's actually like a white highlight, shimmery white. It's quite pretty, it's quite unique. I, I don't mind it. Um, Hopeless Romantic, this one is a really beautiful champagne shade. I really enjoyed it. Now, see, now I'm like, oh, you liked this, just keep it. We're not keeping it. Head Over Heels is the next one. This is a gold shade, it's not too dark. A lot of gold shades can actually be too dark for me, um, but this one was fine. Uh, the next one is Declaration of Love. You will be able to tell that this one is too dark for me. You can see, like, definitely too dark. I enjoyed this palette. And I definitely thought that um, Delicate Pleasure 
was quite a unique shade and I enjoyed it. I particularly enjoyed it for when I was doing like sort of spotlight highlighting. So, you know, using a very close to my skin color highlighter and then using that light shade to sort of like, you know, spotlight on like certain areas just to make them pop even more. Um, does that mean I want to keep it? No, I'm not. Look, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. The formula is really nice. It looked beautiful on the skin. It wore well. The colors are great. I didn't have any issues with it, but I'm just, I'm not going to keep it just because I have too much. And my whole, like the whole point of this series is to use stuff and like mentally determine realistically what I'm going to be able to wear. And I'm already keeping more than I can wear. But also I'm trying to stay within the bounds of don't just get rid of everything because then you're going to rebound and go and buy a whole bunch of shit that you don't need. So we're not doing that. We'll get rid of that one. I feel like based on what I've kept so far, I won't miss having that one and I can probably survive with what I've got. That sounds so fucking dramatic. It's ridiculous. Let's move on to some Kevin Aquan highlighters. So these are these are bougie. They come in these like velvet slips. Um, these are the Neo highlighters, and I have two. I've got Sahara, which is a golden rose glow. This one was my favorite. I can't open it. There we go. Very good. This is why it's my favorite. She's you know bland and boring. Um, it is a gradient highlight, so you can, you know, take it from the lightest, take it in the middle, take it from the deepest end, or you can just mix them all together and that's fine. Um, this is a very, like, soft focus highlight. This is not a glowing pop highlight like some of the other ones that we just saw. I really enjoy this. This is something that I would consider a no makeup makeup item. Um, beautiful, wearable, you know, t it's going to take me from summer to winter. I am going to keep this one, uh, but I have another one which I've decided I'm going to get rid of. This one is the Ibiza Iridescent Glow. So this one is actually, I believe it was purple, yeah. So uh, this is just a little bit, you know, less wearable. Um, for me anyway, I think like if a purple highlighter suits you, then, you know, obviously it would be fine, but I just don't see myself reaching for this to be perfectly honest. This is more my jam. This is less my jam. I don't want to keep them both. So I'm going to get rid of the Ibiza one. Let's move in to my Too Faced palette. This is a turn up the light highlighting, uh, sorry, complexion enhancing highlighting palette in the shade Light. So there's three types of highlighters in here. You have, um, what have we got? Where are we? This one is Glow, Soft Focus and Dazzle. So the Glow highlight is um, a glowy highlight. I guess what you would consider like traditional maybe. Um, the Soft Focus is quite similar to the ambient lighting, um, ambient lighting powders. <laughs> from Hourglass and the Dazzle is, I don't know, I don't know what they were thinking with this Dazzle formula. Um, it's not very impressive. It's sparkly but also a bit flaky and it's just, I don't know, it's not great. I don't like the Dazzle formula. The other two, I don't mind. The Soft Focus one, it's okay. Um, but it's not, like, I wouldn't choose that over an ambient lighting powder. I wouldn't choose it over the Kevin Aquan one that I just showed you. Um, and I also have one from Laura, Mer Laura Mercier, which is the, um, oh, is it the Matte Radiance highlighter? Again, that's a soft focus highlighter and it's absolutely beautiful. But, like, this doesn't hold a candle to it. Like it, it's, it's got nothing on those products. 
The one that I do like is the glow shade, but also I don't really want to keep a three pan palette that is, to be honest, quite bulky, uh, an awkward shape, so it's kind of hard to like store it in a like, you know, nice, neat, organized way with the rest of my palettes. So I, I'm going to get rid of this. It was gifted to me. I do, I always feel bad when I'm getting rid of anything that was gifted to me. Um, I don't know, I just, I guess, you know, it holds like sentimental value, but um, I just, look, I'm not going to use this. It's not super, super old. Um, it's very lightly used, and I, I suspect a friend would enjoy getting some use out of it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pass it on. I'm not going to hold on to that one. Um, my last palette is from Nabla. This is a Glimmer Lights palette. This came to me in PR and look, this palette contains one thing that I am just like dead set obsessed with and that is the center shade. It is the orange one. Get a good look at it. Um, the other two shades are pretty but like I'm I'm not obsessed with them so the first shade is like a light pink and there are you know peachy highlights in there or peachy sparkles uh, the orange shade is like next level magic gorgeous I just want to use it as an eyeshadow um, I can't wear it as a highlighter I uh, this isn't I don't think this is really designed it says a multi-reflective illuminating palette i don't know it's <sighs> these darker shades could certainly be used on the face and the body to highlight but it's going to look best on deeper skin tones so you know when it comes to using it as a highlighting palette it's just not really designed for me which is fine but I love this shade so much like it just makes me happy this shade down here uh, which is called reborn it's a pretty standard pink for me I like I'm just never gonna reach for it um, I like the palette I do want to keep it for elixir and I could make excuses that this shade also you know is very wearable for me and you know I, I can use it as a highlight because I can um, but I'm never going to reach for this. I know I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to pull this out of my highlighting drawer to use it as an eyeshadow because that's the only way I'd be able to use it. Um, and I'm probably not going to reach for this shade over any of the others that I've kept. So I am going to begrudgingly get rid of it. I would say this has been a fairly successful round of products for me to test out because I'm getting rid of almost half. I'm getting rid of six of my palettes and I'm keeping seven. There's a fly in here. <laughs> Lucky we're wrapping this up. I'm about to crack the sheets. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. I definitely still feel that, you know, keeping seven highlighting palettes is too much actually I'm keeping six and I'm putting one in my sentimental drawer so that's look that's okay um I definitely still feel like I've kept too many but I've kept the ones where I have like I've just I've got a thing about keeping them so I've got to keep them um and I also still have an absolute stack of highlighters that I eventually, you know, have to play with them and decide, you know, more of what I'm going to get rid of in the future because I just, I have so, so many. I just, if there was one thing that I wish never happened in the beauty community, it is the highlighter craze of like 2016, 17, 18. <laughs> Um, and I wish I never got caught up in it so yeah anyway whatever it happened and <laughs> here are the fruits of my labor next to come in the series will be ugh, I actually don't know like maybe a lip video of some description I'm working on my lip products it's not going well but it's not going badly so we'll just say it's going um, I am gonna have to break it up into multiple parts though because 
look I have a lot of lip products it's too many and it's too many to talk about in one video it's too many to test all at once so you know we're gonna have to do it incrementally to work through it um, and I am mentally processing how to work on my eyeshadow palettes I haven't actually decided how I'm gonna do it yet I think I know how I'm gonna do it but it's gonna take a long time and you know I just kind of need to be mentally prepared for that and I'm not yet <laughs> still working on my individual eyeshadows so I'm gonna leave it there um, I hope you guys enjoyed it feel free to leave your comments down below let me know how many eye eyeshadow palettes God uh, highlight palettes you have in your collection and if you want to admit how many single highlighters you have as well feel free to do so if you got caught up in the highlighting craze of the last like decade uh, commiserate with me in the comments because I, I have regrets I have so many regrets anyway today we made progress on that so it's good so I will catch you guys in the next one bye